Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this video will be a Don't Starve Together guide where most of the things will be able to be applied to Reign of Giants. This will be a up-to-date version of my old guide and I'm hoping that this guide helps some of you guys out. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So a few tips for navigating the game a little easier. Turning screen shake off in settings can help quite a bit with navigating underground when rocks are falling or when fighting giants and you want to turn lag compensation off as well as this will help when you have low ping on servers with being able to kite specific mobs. The only forest and cave setting that I would recommend changing is setting disease to none and Clay definitely agrees with this as they have removed disease entirely in the most recent patch. I just thought I would mention this just in case you guys are on previous patches or if for whatever reason disease reappears in the future. So a few control basics to start off with. You can click or press WSMD to move around the personal preference. Clicking on grass or anything around you will harvest it. But you can also hold space and this will interact with the closest thing next to you, such as this berry bush or these seeds. If you press M, this will open your map so you can see a top down view of everything in the area. I personally like using a mini map mod as well so that I can constantly have the map up in my top right hand corner. A little tip. Um, if you click on the ground and open your map, your character will move in the direction of where you clicked whilst your map is open, allowing you to be able to look at the map and be on the move if you don't have a minimap mod. Pressing F will auto attack anything hostile around you, or pressing Ctrl F will auto attack anything neutral or hostile around you. So the best thing to do now is basically just go crazy harvesting everything you can around you. Grass, twigs, Carrots, flint, uh, you can grab some flowers for now if you want, but they are mainly used for getting sanity back when you uh, have trouble, as they give 5 sanity back for each one picked up. Another thing I would definitely recommend doing this early is doing the control F near butterflies when you're stood near them to kill them and get some butterfly wings. This is nice easy food and also helps us nice heal. After gathering a few basic resources, the first thing you're going to want to make is a pickaxe, which requires two flint. Uh, the reason for this is, if you are unable to find the third flint to build the axe and the pickaxe, you have a pickaxe, so you can go and break a boulder to mine some more flint, which allows you to build the axe and move on to the trees. Chopping down a lot of trees at this point is fairly important, as wood is a heavily used resource, I would recommend at least trying to have a full stack of 20 wood within the first few days. Just be careful not to go too crazy chopping a bunch of trees in one area as the trees may not be too happy with that and come to life before your very eyes. There's no need to worry about this too much as they tend to get bored following you after a while if they get hostile with something else, or you can place a bunch of pine cones that you picked up to pacify the tree. Once you come across these gold vein boulders, it's important you mine these as they will contain precious gold, which is a very important resource for building things early on. I would advise trying to have at least 5 gold and 28 rocks by the end of the first few days. Exploration will be an important part of helping your long-term survival here, so the best thing to do early on for exploration is to walk around the edges of the map next to the ocean. This allows you to gauge how big some of the biomes and peninsulas that you may want to base on are. You can also follow roads, and this is a good idea because roads give you an increased speed modifier so that you are able to explore the map faster. However, these aren't always the optimal routes to go if you're trying to explore the entire map. So once the bar reaches the blue bit in the top right, you're going to need light to survive as darkness will kill you in Dirt Starve. To do this, building a torch is a simple enough task requiring twigs and grass. You can use this to set fire to things around you, 
just be sure to not set fire to too many things that you may require the resources of. This will allow you to gather items around while you put your torch away. There's a small list of important things to look out for on your travels, which includes, first of all, wormholes. Which look like this and open up when you get close, but don't be too scared as they are not hostile. They are strange inhabitants of the constant, which, when you jump into them, will remove 15 of your sanity and transport you to a random location. These can be important to have near your base, as later on getting around the map quick is a nice little thing to have. Another good thing to look out for are these patches on the floors, which when you hover over them say Walrus Camp. They won't be used at the moment, but once it comes to winter, it's good to know whereabouts they're based in the world. These green mushrooms you see, scattered around the world, are really useful. Be sure to pick these up when you cook them, they give back a nice chunk of sanity. The beefalo are very useful as well, which can be found in this grassy savanna biome. They are in herds and drop manure, which is a fairly useful resource. Just be a little cautious during certain seasons, as they may have red asses, indicating that they are breeding and will be hostile towards the player. Another thing which looks kind of scary, I'll admit, to a first time viewer of this, is the eye bone. But don't be alarmed, this is just a friendly little fella called Chester. And he acts as a portable backpack with his eye bone taking up one slot in your inventory and giving you nine to store items with it. Something you may notice at this point is food in your inventory going from a green to yellowish and maybe even red colour. Now this just symbolises how much the food is spoiling and the bar of the background colour will decrease over time as it spoils. Stale food does not give as many stats in hunger, sanity and health as it would if it was not stale. This is nothing to worry about too much because if the food is uncooked you are able to place down a fireplace, cook it and be able to get some of the longevity of your food back and use it for meals or eating on the spot before it goes bad again. Speaking of placing down a fireplace, gather the required materials for a campfire to place down during one of the nights to cook food, and place down a science machine. Now it's recommended at this point to have the amount of wood and stone I recommended earlier along with the gold, so that you're able to pre-build something. So the first things you will want to build at the science machine at this point are a backpack, which gives you eight extra carry slots, a shovel, which you can use to dig up tree stumps and other such things, a rope, which you will use to build a spear, which you can find in the fight tab. Now, something you may have noticed during that time is every time you craft something for the first time, when it has the light bulb above it, it gives back a portion of sanity. Now with the resources you gathered earlier, it's time to build an alchemy engine. So for this you're going to need four boards, six cut stone, and four gold. You can make the boards from four wood, make the cut stone from three regular stone, and the electrical doodads which you'll need two of, each require two gold and one cut stone each. Once you are able to build the alchemy engine, prototype it, but right click on the floor and do not place it. This will keep it in your inventory, the little blue outline, allowing you to place it once you find your base location. So for the last few things you may want to build at your science machine before leaving, the first thing is a log suit, which will be very useful for early on fighting before you are set up at your base, and a hammer, as this doesn't require a science machine to build, but it is necessary for taking down your science machine and retrieving half of your spent loot including that juicy gold nugget. What you are seeing on screen is a gobbler, which are cheeky little pests in Don't Starve, which will spawn from freshly picked berry bushes. These creatures will try and roam around to pick any berries and eat them that they find, including those on the floor. You can use this to your advantage by placing some berries on the floor, waiting for the gobbler to move in, move in yourself for a quick strike, and get some easy dropsticks. This tip also applies to rabbits, but I'd be a little more cautious around them as they tend to be a bit more skittish than the gobblers are. Another creature you can kill for easy food is the mole worm. Now these guys are attracted to minerals such as rocks and flint, and if you place one on the floor when they're around, they'll pop up to try and grab it, 
Give them a quick swipe of your weapon and you've got some easy morsels. Now to cover some of the final items you're going to need before settling down. The first is gears. Now throughout most of my time playing the game I tend to find these on set pieces that you may very well find around the world or by having the clockwork monsters be killed by something else. But so the guy doesn't take up too much time I won't be covering how to fight them here. You can also find gears by digging up graves as a small chance and by harvesting tumbleweeds at a small chance. Speaking of fighting, I will now move on to the combat section of the video where I'll teach you guys how to fight the most basic mobs that you will need resources for crafting early on. So first off is spiders, in which you'll want to fight these guys one at a time because in a horde they can be fairly irritating. What you want to do is step onto their web and pull one of them away. Just slowly dragging it away, be sure not to move too fast, otherwise it may lose interest in you and go back to its nest. When it's far enough away, bait an attack and smack it three times, and it should stun lock it and be enough to kill it. If you do happen to hit a spider too close to the nest, be sure to run away as far as you can, because if the nest is bigger than the tier one you see me currently fighting there, you may get yellow spiders come out, which can be a very big pain for new players. You can destroy this as well to get the silk or you can leave it to grow into a bigger spider nest and come back and destroy it later which will net you more silk in the long run. Another tactic if you do want to fight multiple at once you can place down a trap and lead a spider into it, harvest the trap and it will already be dead for an easy kill. Next up we have pigs whose houses you will want to destroy with your hammer as it will net you a hefty two boards, two cut stone and two pig skin. So to kill these guys all you have to do is lure them in with a treat. So click on them when you have food in your inventory, go in, make sure you have your log suit equipped for this and spam hit them, just tank the hit because they're very annoying to fight otherwise and you should get an easy kill on them there. As a little side note, what you see on the screen here is a touchstone. Bear in mind where these are and don't starve together as when you die you will need to come here to revive yourself. If you're playing Reign of Giants in the base game, activate these and it will give you your second chance at life. The reason I'm mentioning this now is if you have a hammer and go up to the pig heads you can knock them down to knock yourself even more pig skin or you can wait until a full moon and come and knock them down then and get yourself some nightmare fuel to go along with it. Hound attacks. So these are guaranteed to happen in Don't Starve. Just keep your ears open for sounds of barking and growling and your character saying something along the lines of what are those sounds. To fight these it's not too difficult. Just go in for two hits, a dodge and then go back in and if you're quick enough you can get three hits in and it will die before it makes an attack itself. So the next thing I'm going to showcase the koala font. You're going to want to find these dirt patches on the ground and follow the footprint direction to find the next patch on the ground. You're going to want to keep following these until your character says something along the lines of the creature is near. Turn your camera in the direction of the creature just to make sure it looks like the one on screen here as there are two other mini boss variants that you will probably want to avoid. So for this creature you want to run it to the edge of the world Make sure you can get a hit off there whilst she is running against the edge or asleep and then run away. Uh, you can bait an attack here and go back in for six hits and constantly keep doing that and until you kill it. It has 1000 health but don't be too scared because as long as you get the timing right you shouldn't take any damage. And it will net you a nice eight meats and a trunk. I personally like to eat the trunk straight away as it gives a nice boost of health and takes up a bit of space on its own. And now it's time to start choosing a place for a base. So I'm going to give a little bit of advice for each biome and why you should have it nearby at least, and a few things you can find within each one and why you need them near. So the birch nut forest biome, or the deciduous biome as known to some, can be told by the general orange colour of everything. This is home to multiple creatures, one of which is the Catcoon, which when given a toy, I tend to use sticks, or hurl up an item for you in response. 
It is also home to fireflies and a fair amount of moles as well, which you can make mole farms from and gather the fireflies for decoration. You can also find pig villagers here, which are very useful for dragging enemies towards. The Pig King, in which you can give trinkets in exchange for gold. And these villagers also tend to have a nice amount of resources to gather as well. And the last thing is Glomer's Statue, in which you'll always find a pan flute next to. If you return here during a full moon, you can harvest the flower upon the stump and get Glomer as a companion. The swamp is a dangerous and hazardous biome, but it is a good one to have nearby, as the reeds that are growing in this place only grow here. If you come across this place in your travels, it's a good idea to try and pick up at least 8 reeds so that you can build something we will be needing later. Just be cautious of the rumbles in the ground, as tentacles will pop out of these if you stay near them for too long. I would also suggest being wary of the houses in this place, as they do not house the friendly pig that you're used to. And the ponds as well, because as soon as dusk arises, mosquitoes come out to play. As I said, a very dangerous biome. The desert is the final of the important biomes to have nearby, and there are two deserts in the game, however. One of these is more useful than the other one. The differences can be told by which cacti you see within the desert. The barrel cactus, this uh, circular one, is the one we are looking for, however as this biome houses the tumbleweeds, which can be harvested for three random items, which tend to be grass or twigs, so it makes for a nice easy way of getting grass and twigs, and you also have renewable items within this biome. You can also harvest the cacti to get cactus flesh, which when cooked makes a nice sanity region. So now it comes to choosing a location for a base, and bearing in mind all of the things I told you to look out for, such as the desert, the savannah for the beefalo, the pig village, a touchstone, a cave entrance, walrus camps, a swamp, and many other things, uh, you can sort of situate your base between all of these resources, making sure that the resources and biomes are within walking distance making it so that later on it won't be too difficult to reach those locations. I decided to set my base up here, as I have uh, a rock biome pretty close. I've got the birch nut, the savannah, the desert, and the walrus camps all within walking distance. The few things I'm missing, such as a swamp, shouldn't be too difficult, as I have a wormhole nearby that leads me down to the swamp. So now it comes to setting up your base. Using the wood and rocks you have gathered to build a fire pit, you can place it in the centre of where you want your base to be, making a nice cosy setup. You can also get the alchemy engine you built earlier and place it at your base finally. You can now build a football helmet in the fight tab, requiring one pigskin and one rope, which is a nice replacement for the log suit if you want to use your backpack alongside it. Heading down into the caves will be necessary for an ingredient for this next item. The light bulbs, which when you harvest from light flowers, will decay over time, so be sure to get these before you're about to make the item. Don't be too worried of the caves, there shouldn't be many immediate threats around there. If you guys do want me to do a guide on caves at some point, just let me know in the comments and I will get on that. So for the lantern you will also need some rope and some twigs. So this lantern has a durability much like a torch, but it has a wider radius. You can also drop this on the floor, allowing you to bring out another tool and stick within its radius. You can turn it on and off whilst it's on the floor as well. This allows you to go around and do things such as chop trees and dig up stumps whilst it's dark. You can refuel this using the light bulbs you found underground, as well as many other items. Speaking of light sources, it is now time to create a big one by burning down a forest. You'll probably want to make sure that this forest isn't connected to your alchemy engine and any other resources you will want to keep. So if you need to, 
you can always plant a few pine cones in an area which is away from everything else that is flammable. Come back and burn it once they have grown. Once they have finished burning, you'll want to chop them down and you'll collect charcoal, which is a resource for what we're going to be making at the base next. So once you have the ingredients shown on screen, you can build a crock pot and a ice box. You want to place these in such a way that they're close enough so that going inside of the ice box and the crock pot at the same time is possible for cooking meals. So in the ice box you can store all of your food and it will decrease the amount of time until it decays. And within the crock pot you can place four food items within to create a meal. I would recommend one meat item and three vegetable items. This is an easy way of making meatballs which restores 75 hunger and is one of the easiest foods to make in the game and fairly easy to remember as well. You can build multiple crock pots to place around your ice box to form a small kitchen allowing you to cook multiple meals at once. A chest requiring three boards can also be built allowing for a nice nine inventory space storage at your base. So another weapon you can make using the juicy meat and the pig skin you got from killing the pig is a hamba. Now this works slightly differently to usual weapons as it has a spoilage timer instead of a damage durability. So be sure to make this when you plan on using it. So now for another food based item is a drying rack. You can place this at your base and place a monster meat regular meat or morsel on it and it will dry over the course of a few days and these in the long run will net you more health and sanity from eating them. Now for something to build if you don't want your entire base to burn down by lightning. This is a lightning rod which can be found in the science tab. Be sure to place this more or less in the center of where you plan on building everything as it will attract any lightning bolts that would usually hit the area around it. To get a close source of twigs, grass and berries near your base, you can grab your shovel and go off in the distance to dig up some of these that are planted. When you dig them up you will get a plantable version that you can bring back to your base and plant. The grass tufts and berry bushes will require fertilizer every so often, however this can include manure, rot and things like glomers goop. You might want to leave some of the berry bushes near your base planted because if they haven't been dug up they do not require fertilizer. As a quick little side note, as you see me planting the saplings here I have a green grid. This is because of a mod called Geometric Placement which I highly recommend for building nicely laid out bases. Using the reeds which hopefully you found earlier in the swamp you can make papyrus in the refine tab, which you will need two of, and that can lead you on to building a birdcage. Now we're going to need to also get a bird for this birdcage, which will require us to build a bird trap and lay a seed on it and wait for a bird to arrive. Grab it from the trap and put it into the birdcage. Having a birdcage allows you to get an easy source of eggs, which you can get from feeding the bird monster meat. Now in a recent update you are now able to feed a bird any form of monster meat, but before the update it was just cooked monster meat. The egg will allow you to make pierogi, which uses one meat, one egg and two vegetables. This is a very good meal for getting health back. By making a bug net with the ingredients shown on the screen, we can move on to the, making the final building of our base. You'll want to head to where you can find bees and capture four regular bees. Just be cautious doing this near a hive as it will cause red killer bees to come out of it. You can easily outrun these however and you will need to kill an entire hive at some point. With the rest of the net, capture butterflies as you're going to need these to plant for flowers. I know, it makes a lot of sense. Once you've captured the bees, Go up to a beehive to attack it and take it out. You can go to one that you've captured bees near as it will remove the amount of bees that spawn from the hive. These are fairly easy to fight. Just put on your log suit if you're worried, but you can basically just tank them if they're on their own as they get stun locked. 
or you can keep moving away and going back in for a hit if there's multiple. Then just destroy the hive and get the items it drops. And when you get back to your base, build a bee box using those bees and plant it at somewhat of a distance from your base as later on killer bees will spawn from this during the spring. Plant the flowers around the bee box and you're ready to go. So that about wraps it for the autumn preparation. There's just one more thing before I go. If you go into survival, you can find a thermal stone and building this will help you greatly during the winter. If you place it near a fire, it will get warmer and allow you to carry it around with you so you don't freeze. So that about wraps it up for me. Just a, another bit of advice. Watch out on day 30 during the night. You might want to move away from your base because there will be a little surprise boss spawning. We can get to that eventually if you guys want me to make a winter guide, however. So I hope this helped and I will speak to you all next time.